From the hidden secrets of voodoo witchcraft to the wasp that makes cockroaches their mind slaves, today we look at what you didn't know about zombies. Number 9. Zombie Caterpillar The classic depiction of zombies as we know them typically features the decaying corpses of men and women hungry for brains and or flesh. But in the case of the gypsy moth caterpillar, the reality of zombification can be much more disgusting than it is in fiction. The gypsy moth caterpillar is the target of a particular species of baculovirus, a type of virus that relies on insects and arthropods as hosts. Once infected, this virus can take control of the caterpillar's molting process and even somehow trick it into climbing to the top of a tree. Once there, the caterpillar will just wait in the sun until it melts, a natural decomposition process that ends up being key for the virus' survival. This melted state results in the spread of the virus as it drips down from the canopy across leaves below, and thus the viral infection continues to spread. Number 8. Clairvius Narcisse In pop culture, voodoo, black magic, and zombies go together like toast, bacon, and eggs. But in the real world, there's no such thing. No living corpses or hexes or potions or any of that other hocus pocus. None of it is real, right? Well, it's a little complicated. One interesting case on record tells us of Clairvius Narcisse, a Haitian man who had supposedly become a zombie. In 1962, Narcisse checked into a hospital complaining of a fever and some sort of tingling sensation. His condition went critical quickly, and within two days' time, he was pronounced deceased by doctors. A funeral was held, and the body was buried at the local cemetery sealed within a coffin. He later said that during this time he could actually hear everything. He just couldn't respond. Shortly after his passing, his grave was disturbed, and Narcisse was removed by a supposed Bokor, or Haitian voodoo witch. The Bokor dragged him away from his grave and forced him to work with others that were in a similar state. Together they toiled away on a farm, being force-fed a concoction that would guarantee their continued obedience. Narcisse remained enslaved at the Bokor's compound for two years before one of his peers found a way to resist and slay the voodoo witch. Fearing the whole ordeal was of his own brother's crafting, Narcisse stayed away from home for the next 16 years until his brother had passed away. Surprising his sister in the local market, he revealed his survival and proved his identity through a childhood nickname only their family knew. Number 7. The Serpent and the Rainbow The experience of Clairvius Narcisse drew a ton of media attention as researchers and publications across the world sent representatives to investigate this unbelievable story. Time, New Scientist, ABC, and the BBC all sent reporters to cover the story in depth, filming documentaries and writing feature stories that cover Narcisse's story. Meanwhile, Harvard University sent graduate student and ethnobotanist Wade Davis to inspect the case. In The Serpent and the Rainbow, a book written by Davis detailing this trip, tells of a special toxin he discovered that is developed to induce the zombifying effects victims endure. Supposedly made from the pufferfish venom tetrotodoxin and an exotic flower called datura, Davis hypothesized the concoction to be a mixture of those two along with unorthodox ingredients like toad and human bones to keep up mystical appearances. The resulting effect would then be like being under the influence of a highly suggestible anesthetic, which would explain Narcissus' condition at the farm. However, attempts to study or recover traces of tetrodotoxin from him or any others that claim to have encountered something similar have yet to succeed and the story of Clairvius Narcisse remains up for debate. Number 6. Real Zombies Equals No Survivors Have you ever wondered just how far you'd get in the midst of a zombie apocalypse? 
Well, thanks to the students at the University of Leicester, now you can find out without having to actually dodge the gnashing teeth of a supernatural horde. As part of a study to be published in an undergraduate science journal from the Department of Physics and Astronomy, a group of students adapted a model used to track epidemics throughout populations to some of the most common themes of zombies in pop culture. They assumed that each host for the zombie infection would continuously infect other non-infected people. People that would encounter a zombie would have a 90% chance of being infected, and the zombies would have 20 days to feed before perishing, as were the rules of the model set by the research students. The infection first spread slowly as the numbers would slowly multiply during the first three weeks. But near day 20, the zombie population would make a drastic increase, expanding the infectious spread at an exponential rate. Over a period of three weeks, the majority of the global populace is eradicated, with only 181 survivors by day 100. This study was incomplete, as it failed to account for some human benefits, such as natural boundaries like oceans and mountains, and an individual's ability to defend themselves. The students have since published other studies to follow up on these potential variables. Number 5. Fungal Revival Already used to operate in hordes, carpenter ants can be scary enough on their own. But when teamed up with the fungus Ophiocordyceps unilateralis, the resulting creation is an infernal marriage that's bound to haunt your nightmares. This fungus begins as an individual cell floating in the bloodstream of an ant, slowly duplicating before joining together through short tube-like structures. Connecting in this way allows the fungus to communicate with the other cells and share nutrients. As these fungal cells begin to increase and join together, the carpenter ant begins losing control of their bodily functions while the fungus grabs the reins. In a way, the fungus itself is more like a colony than an individual being, making this relationship all the more creepy. After taking control of a host ant long enough, O. unilateralis will grow a large stalk out of the ant's skull and force it to latch its powerful jaws to the underside of a low-hanging tree. From here, a series of spore-producing growths will appear, then burst, spreading the fungus to more ants that may be nearby. Number 4. The Jewel Wasp As if a fungus and a virus that can induce living corpse-like behaviors in bugs wasn't enough, how about an insect that zombifies other insects? The jewel wasp, sometimes called the emerald cockroach wasp and found across many tropical regions, has an interesting technique when hunting its main prey. First, the wasp will aim at the abdomen, applying a sting that induces limited mobility in its front legs. This makes its head an easier target, as the wasp then stings a specific point of the brain that steers its locomotion. The venom doesn't actually immobilize it, though, instead subduing the roach by blocking off any neural receptors that would tell it to flee or even move on its own. Still capable of movement, the roach is then pulled along by the wasp, similar to a dog on a leash. The lame-brained roach follows obediently as it only requires slight physical motivation to operate its motor skills. Once back in the wasp's burrow, it will lay an egg on the roach's midsection, then block up entry into the hole. In the following week and a half, the larva will hatch, then eat its way through the cockroach over the course of multiple days before building a cocoon within its husk, all while the roach is still alive. Number 3. A Cat's Best Friend A widespread parasite, Toxoplasma gondii, takes residence most often in pet cats but has the capability of infecting nearly all warm-blooded animals. Due to it being so common with feline house pets, researchers predict that nearly one-third of all people have been exposed to the parasitic infection. Fortunately, healthy adults have little more to worry about than a mild flu at the most, though dormant cysts on the brain that have been identified as another common occurrence. These cysts, however, can be activated by a lapse in the immune system and some scientists believe recurrent infection can be at fault for a variety of neurological disorders. The effects of Toxoplasma gondii have different effects on different species. However, as researchers recently discovered the long-term effects of chronic infection in mice, natural prey to the house cat, these rodents are typically capable of figuring out what and where to avoid when scavenging. 
However, experiments showed mice infected with the toxoplasma parasite were more likely to lose all defensive inhibitions in regards to their natural feline enemies. Even stranger, this behavior continued beyond infection, showing the permanent change inflicted by the bug. Effectively wiping their minds clean, the Toxoplasma gondii may be your cat's best friend in zombifying its next meal. Number 2. CDC and Zombie Preparedness Is there anything worse than seeing a horror film in which a zombie apocalypse begins but the government isn't ready for it? Well, fear not. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, has the unliving covered. On their website, the CDC has set aside a specific page and accompanying links dedicated solely to what they call zombie preparedness. With a short history of zombies and pop culture provided, these pages quickly get to the point for the list of materials you'll need. In addition, it covers a short list of pre-planned checkpoints, emergency contacts, and escape routes that you can use when the time comes. The site also provides instructions for educators to implement simple zombie preparedness strategies while at school. Lastly, the CDC promises to engage in a thorough investigation should a breakout occur. But as instructive and educational as this site is, the true purpose seems to be to prepare the public for emergencies in general. By using the popular supernatural trope of zombies, the CDC is able to communicate catch-all methods of preparedness in a more casual tone. Other zombie preparedness resources from the CDC include YouTube videos made as a part as an open contest and the release of a graphic novel on their website, solidifying its role as an outreach campaign above all else. Number 1. Zombie Awareness Month not taking things as lightly as the CDC, the organizers behind the Zombie Awareness Month campaign look to use their platform to raise awareness about zombies and the possibility of a future apocalypse at their hands. Planned annually for the month of May, Zombie Awareness Month is the creation of the Zombie Research Society, an organization that looks to study zombies through cultural, historical, and scientific means. During this month, many will revel in celebration, taking part in events such as zombie-themed marathons, food drives, and beer crawls. Some people, though, like Matt Moak of the Zombie Research Society, tend to treat this month a little bit more seriously, seeing it as a time to educate the world and prepare for the inevitable pandemic. No time to dilly-dally when the apocalypse is on its way.